What is up everyone? Chris Roma here, aka Roma Aquatics. My apologies to my shrimp and coral people. This video is going to be about 3D printing. However, 3D printing has become quite a big part of my aquarium hobby as I 3D print lots of things for my shrimp and coral tanks, uh, such as moss ledges, under gravel filters, float valve holders, frag racks, the list goes on. Uh, but this video will be about how to assemble the afterburner hot end mod for the micro switch direct drive on the Ender 3, Ender 3 V2. Let's get to it. So this is everything we are going to need. We have a precision screwdriver, uh, which is important because we do need that thin diameter about the same size as a number four screw or an M3 screw. Um, we have some extra screws. We'll get with the screws as we go along. Um, the mount, all these files can be found for free on Thingiverse. Uh, search for the Micro Swiss Voron Afterburner mod. Uh, works with the Ender 3 uh, version of the Micro Swiss Direct Drive. This is the only part that I altered uh, because the screw holes were a little bit uh, too big for my liking and there was a little bit of extra parts uh, involved. We'll get into all that as we get through the video, uh, but I will explain also how to assemble this. Uh, if you don't use my altered part and you use the piece that came with uh, the original file, all the rest of these files. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to build the cooler fan part. Um, so we're going to get rid of the hot end assembly pieces. We have the fan, the fan casing, and some screws here. I'm going to move the screws out of the way just for now. And we have our fan. So I got these fans. I got a pack of four of them. This is a 4020 fan. I got a pack of four of these on Amazon for about uh, 10 bucks. And we all, we need to remove the cover off of this. And that's easily done by just giving it a little bit of a squeeze. And these little clips come undone. And the cover comes right off pretty easily. This is the piece we're after as it fits perfectly into our printed piece. So what we want to do is grab the end of the wire and put it through this rectangle there. Make sure the blower part is blowing down and fit it right in there. It should slide in fairly nicely and easily. And then we just want to put the cover on. And the cover uh, has little countersunk uh, holes for the fan so it should snap together pretty nicely and be pretty tight on there even without any screws uh, but the first two screws we're going to want to put in here are um our number four three quarter inch screw we're just going to go ahead and screw that in right here on the both of these top here. I'll go ahead and screw these in and we will be back after that is done. And remember, we are screwing into plastic here. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly screwing it a little bit of tighter as it gets tight. I'm just slowly tightening them, not forcing it. And then I'm giving it a little wiggle. And as I can see, this side's still a little loose. So then I give it a little bit more of a tighten, a little bit more, give it a little wiggle. It's still a little loose on both sides, just a bit. And I just slowly go like that from there. Remember, we are screwing into plastic, so you don't want to just go overload right off the bat. Um, but it's getting nice and nice tight here. I think we're, we're just about set. It's not going anywhere. It's on there nice and good. So now we've reached the point where we have the first option. Um, so th the reason I altered this file is because the holes on the back part um, that these number four screws are gonna screw into, 
up the one inch ones, not the one and a half inch ones. So we have the one inch number four screws. These go in through here and they hit that and they screw into the back black part here. Uh, the original part provided the number four screw um, was too small and it slid. It was basically the same size as the white part. So it just slid right in just kind of like I screw, can slide it right into this white part. It slid right through. Um, so I shrunk it and made it a little bit smaller so that we this uh, number four screw can grab. But if you want to use the original file that came on Thingiverse and not use my altered file, you can use a number six screw and screw it directly in here. And that does work. It grips the white and the black quite tight, tightly. Um, but mind you, the screw head is a bit bigger on the six and it doesn't fit, so it won't countersink in there. And it is obviously a bit heavier since it's a bit bigger and it does stick out the back a bit more. Um, you can get away with going down to the one inch versus the one and a half inch on the number four screw uh, because of the countersink. So that is why I opted to modify the file and use a one inch number four screw. Uh, so I'm gonna put a one inch number four screw in on each side here. We got our cooling end almost done here, but next step we need to move on to the hot end assembly here. And for that we run into option number two. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I believe, how I have a number four half-inch screw already preset in there and why a precision screwdriver would come in handy. And the reason why is the original design of this. Um, it wants you to take a one-and-a-half-inch number four screw and put it through and then screw it and it comes out the other side and screws into the, into the mount uh, when it needs to. Um, but if you can see, there's a screw then directly through one of the air channels, which is not uh, optimal in my opinion. Um, so my solution to that was to just use a half inch screw, which is how the biggest screw I would have liked it went a little bit bigger but I couldn't fit the screw inside this channel um, but half inch uh, number four screw uh, and take the precision screwdriver and get it in here like that and use a pair of tweezers to hold the screw uh, this part is definitely a bit fiddly uh, can be a bit frustrating, but I think will be worth it in the long run because you only need to do it once. Uh, but what I did was I basically just grabbed that uh, number four half inch screw. And as you can see, the three quarter inch screw doesn't fit, which is why I went with half inch. Uh, but I put the half inch screw in there while I already had this kind of preset as close as I can get it so that I could kind of really fiddly like get that screwdriver on that screw with the screw with that tweezers. So I'd be holding the screw with the tweezers like and trying to get that screwdriver on there and screw it in. And um, yeah, it's fiddly, but you can do it. And then you won't have a screw um, blocking your air channel. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can go with the number four screw straight through, um, which is what we do on this side. But this side, if you can see in there, it's hard to see with the lighting right there. You can see the channel. Um, there's a channel for the screw and it kind of sits right against the side. Um, so it's not in the air chamber like this side is. This side is like directly in the middle of the air chamber. This is only like maybe half of the screw is in the air chamber and it's built into the side of the channel 
so I don't think it's nearly as bad. Um, I was gonna do this solution on this side, but since the screw is built like into the side of the channel, the screw would have to go in like diagonally. And you can do it, uh, but it's even more fiddly than this side. Um, so I'm happy with with that. That's good enough for me. There's plenty of air moving through there. So this is way easier to do before you put it on the mount and put the mount on your printer. So definitely do that before we get to that step. So uh, if you decide to go this route, do it now. Next step, we need to get over to the printer. This is what your uh, hot end should look like once you disassemble it. I have this free floating. We have the screws from the hot end there. We have the screws from the casing here and we have the screws from your BL touch if you have one there. I also went ahead and pre-cut the blower motor off and we just have a blue and yellow wire sticking out here and I left the hot end cooling fan on there. Um, so what we're going to want to do now is we're going to grab the mount and we're going to put the mount onto the Microsoft Direct Drive and it kind of fits right around this oval piece. We're ready for the mounting piece we printed and there's two screws that removed from the carriage piece uh, or the casing piece for the cooling fan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two screws, we're going to put one in this hole right here and one in that hole right there and just kind of pre-sync them a little bit so they're easier to put in once we go to put it on. And here we have the mount on the screws. There just under the BL touch and there at the top holding the mount on. And now is when I like to put the BL touch on and I also like to put it so that the wire goes behind uh, the PTFE tube there. Uh, so I pull it kind of something like, sorry, one hand is not the easiest. Give me a minute. There we go. All right. So I got the wire pulled up behind there and the BL touch is going to attach there. And then the hot end attaches there and the wire is tucked nicely behind the tube there, which is how I like it. You don't have to do it that way though. That's how I like it. The BL touch is installed as well as the hot end. I went ahead and just screwed that in. And I also went ahead and took out the tools that we're gonna need for the next step, as well as stripping the wires needed. So on for the next step, we are gonna be attaching the cooling fan. So I went ahead and I cut the clip adapter. You're more than welcome to buy the adapter on Amazon and put the male, female, and whatever it is on the other end. I chose to just strip, solder, and heat sink. Uh, but if you choose to just strip, twist, and electrical tape, that will work just fine as well. Uh, but we want, I went ahead and pre stripped the wires. We're going to be attaching the red wire to the yellow wire and the black wire to the blue wire, soldering and heat shrinking. Uh, see you when that's ready. Hopefully you have something that ends up a little bit like this. Black to blue, red to yellow, and insulated properly, however you choose to go about doing it and you have your cooling fan connected now now let's get to connecting that hot end fan now we will be attaching the main air duct and the uh, hot end fan holder to the mount uh, we just need uh, depending on which option you went we need the one and a half inch number four screw and the number four half inch screw that's already preset or we need two of those uh, depending on what option you went uh, but basically we're gonna put this on just like that BL touch wire comes up top uh, the 
hot end wire kind of sticks out the side a little bit. It's above, it's above this bottom deck, but it's not tucked in. Uh, it's not tucked into the inside either. So basically, kind of slides on. You'll feel when it goes on; it fits very nicely. So it's basically it's harder to do one-handed, but basically, yep, it just fit fit right on there nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my precision screwdriver is I'm gonna screw that screw in and I'm gonna put the one and a half inch number four screw in through that side right there. We got that on there nice and tight. Again, we have the long screw in here and that short preset screw in the air channel there or you could use another long screw there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and attach the uh, hot end cooling fan. Uh, so we're going to need this part, and we're going to need two number four three-quarter inch screws. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece, make sure the screws are on the bottom, make sure that sticker on that fan is facing us, and we're going to put the top end in first. So kind of put it in at an angle so the top's in first, and then you kind of push the bottom in. The reason for doing that is the top end's the weakest. You don't want to break that. And it kind of just found that it goes in much easier that way. And we're simply going to turn it around, put it on here, and put those screws in those two holes there. Now that we have the hot end cooling fan attached, time to attach the cooling fan. We need two more three quarter inch number four screws. And this is again where there's a difference. So if you have the original file, not the file that I altered, there's a little piece that's, there's not a channel here at all, it's flat. And there's a little piece that sticks up here um, with two holes in it that screws into these two holes. Focus, focus. Screws into those two holes there. I found it wasn't needed and it made it that little thin piece made it extremely uh well not extremely but it made it more difficult to print in the proper orientation um and also this channel is needed for the wire to go through um so i found that it was needed to have that open i don't know why it was closed off um so if you're using my file you will find that that's missing and the channel is open if you're using the file that came with the rest of the afterburner files um you'll see it's a bit different uh but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take these screws uh this is going to go on top of here and you can see a screw there and a screw there corresponds with that hole and that hole. So we're going to go ahead, take those screws, put it through that hole, screw it into that hole. Hey, editing Chris here. If you're not going to use the washer and lock nut or lock washer that I mentioned in the next step, it's best to use a half inch number four screw for this step versus a three quarter inch. It just works better with the half inch. I also like to use screws that have a washer and lock nut on them for this step because this is the piece you're going to be removing the most often if you happen to have an issue with the extruder or an issue with fuzzy video. Make sure when you're attaching this that the wire goes through that channel that we left earlier if you used my file. If you didn't use my file, you kind of need to feed it through and do something fishy before you solder and attach the wires, uh, which is why I edited the file so I didn't have to deal with that kind of thing. Uh, but wire management, add a zip tie if you have any excess wires to make it nice and purdy, and then take your cable shroud or whatever this thing is called, and tuck it in there nicely. It's easy if you slide it up get a lot of excess move the wires and then let it that excess slide back down over over all of that nonsense and hold it nicely so after updating your x and y offset values for the bl touch if you have one you should be ready to go
Our adjuster Z offset is needed and start printing. Enjoy your afterburner. Ender 5 Plus Edition coming soon.